Okay, so we now have a stiff slab. We have stored it covered under plastic on a porous board, and when you pick it up, it holds its shape. Now we are going to cut it down to the size that we need for our project. So for your project, you're gonna need a different size than what I'm doing here. For this project, I'm demonstrating a five inch by five inch, I think by two and a half inch box. So with a T-square or a metal ruler, we'll get one edge completely straight. And then we can use a T-square function to um, keep our corners 90 degrees or square. So with your um, X-Acto knife, right up against the metal ruler, you're gonna slice straight up and down until you get um, all the cut all the way through. So if you're using an X-Acto knife, cut on a board and not on the um, tables, the butcher block tables in the studio. Then I'm gonna mark, in this case I'm marking five inches, your dimensions will be different. And if you're using a template and just a regular metal ruler, then you can just uh, line your template up to your metal ruler <clears throat> or um, you know measure twice on your slab and cut with your metal ruler into those perfect dimensions so you can see that when the slab is leather hard it really does hold its nice crisp shape and um, so here this is five inches by five inch square and I'm gonna want two of those and um, then I'm going to cut the at the other side. So we're making a box of some sort. So you know that you're going to need six panels. So cutting, uh, measuring, and with the T square, you only really have to measure once because one edge stays square. Make sure to back your fingers away from the blade when using a metal ruler and an exacto to cut. And here you'll see that you always want the metal ruler on the good side. That way, if you make a mistake when cutting, the mistake is in the waste clay and not in the piece you're gonna keep. So here you have your two perfect five inch squares. And now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of our slab. So just to reiterate, we made our slab nicely compressed in the soft, soft slab state, uh, turning it frequently while we were in the studio and compressing every time we turned it. We wanna keep it on a porous board. And while you're in the studio, keep those slabs out and take a look at them so you can turn and compress them frequently. When you're not in the studio, then you want to keep them covered. It's always best to have your slabs a little bit too wet because you can always wait a bit and dry them. But if a slab is too dry, it is impossible to overhydrate it. So as soon as your slab starts to dry a little bit, you can keep them stable stacked in the studio um, while they're being covered, um, you know, while you're away. As soon as they dry a little bit, you can stack them and cover them um, and they won't stick together. So uh, just make sure you stack them from the largest to the smallest so you're not draping a slab over the slab underneath it. So here I am cutting the little uh, two and a half inch sides for this box. So I'm going to need, I'm pretty sure it's two and a half inches. I'm going to need uh, four of those. Um, so obviously your dimensions will be different. It's really important that the slab be nice and firm leather hard when you cut it. Otherwise, when you move it around, it's going to lose its shape. So we shouldn't have a too much waste clay because I laid my, um, my template out, remember, on your clay when it was in the stop slab state. You laid your templates out or just measured and then cut down and reclaimed the clay. So we just measured our uh, slab um, via our template to like a ballpark range, about a half an inch or a quarter of an inch larger than the template itself. That way we have some um, nice waste clay to cut away, but not so much that we're wasting our, our, our fresh clay. So I'm just finishing this up here and then I can uh, demonstrate in the next video how to um, miter and <clears throat> miter and slip and score these together to create the box so you'll see like there's a couple of pieces I had to put those two little pieces aside as I cut my slab down I want to use the most perfect part of the slab so every once in a while I'll just cut something away that uh that is not useful and sometimes I'll just put those to the side and make something 
<clears throat> make something small with them later. Make a little tiny box or a little, some sort of little form. So that way, um, you know, that gives you an opportunity to be creative with those little slabs that you cut away. So always hang on to them. Maybe someone, you know, at your table might need them too. You never know. So here I am just finishing up that those four five inch by two inches.